You span the bottle, then nervously scratch the back of your neck, looking around, wondering who the bottle might stop on. Everyone looked either excited or nervous. One by one, you saw who wanted to play and who didn't, feeling especially sorry for Corda, who looked ready for the earth to swallow him should the bottle stop on him. Something you didn't take personally. Ashido had bullied him into playing after all. As luck would have it, the only person whose expression you wanted to see was the only person whose expression you could not see. Hagakure, your chirpy and excitable classmate, was as unhelpfully unreadable because of her invisibility as ever. What was worse, she was sat completely still, her pyjama shorts folding in a way that led you to believe she had her legs crossed, giving absolutely nothing away. Truth be told, you really liked Hagakure, and it didn't matter one bit that you had no idea what she looked like. She could light up a room as soon as she entered it, bringing enough energy to get anyone pumped up for the day. Her laughter was infectious, and after many weekend adventures to arcades, malls and hiking trips, you could hand on a heart say her appearance, or lack thereof, was irrelevant. You knew she was perfect. The room became giddy as the bottle slowed to a stop. You closed your eyes and made a wish, and only opened them again when Hagakure made an ear-splittingly happy squeal. Well, no need to guess who the bottle had landed on then. You felt joy and nerves hit you all at once, but the way Hagakure shot to her feet like a lightning bolt gave you confidence. In typical fashion, her clothes bobbed up and down as she bounced on the heels of her feet excitedly, an action you recognised even without her wearing shoes or socks because of how often she did it. Then she strode toward you like a woman on a mission. But, to your surprise, she halted herself midway across the circle. She was like a frame, frozen in place, waiting for someone to press the play button. Ah, uh, you okay? You asked, which seemed to snap her out of it. But in the next second, she turned on her heel and marched off. She left the circle entirely, then broke into a run, calling back quite desperately. Wait there! I'll be back! You chuckled as she disappeared into the elevator, then asked anyone who would listen, Should I be nervous? Your only answer was Ashido giggling like she knew something. Your classmates chatted in hushed tones until Hagakure returned. She hopped out of the elevator, then charged towards the circle and at first it wasn't completely obvious why she had left. Until, that was, she stopped right in front of you and smiled. Yes, she smiled. For the very first time, you saw the shape of her lips, because she had covered them in a thick layer of bright red lipstick. It'll go everywhere, but at least you can't miss, she squeaked excitedly. Well, you were more than happy to deal with a few lipstick stains if it meant kissing Hagakure properly. You were thankful for her foresight. She bounced up and down on her toes, then asked quite loudly, Do you want to do it here? Or we can go somewhere private, maybe? You raised a puzzled eyebrow. What do you mean? Well, she said, and you could hear the hint of amusement in her voice. I'm happy to do it here, but it's your tongue everyone will see. My... You cut yourself short with a sharp laugh, realising that she expected, or at least hoped, that you would French kiss her. You hadn't really thought about the dynamics of kissing Hagakure until right now. Of course, until now, you also hadn't had to worry about outsiders' perspectives of the kiss. Sure, to everyone else, it would look like you were kissing thin air. You didn't mind so much, but the fact Hagakure brought it to your attention made you wonder if it worried her. Did she... did she worry you'd be reluctant to kiss her in front of people? Had she gone through that before, and maybe someone else had actually refused because... because they worried what other people would see or think? You stood your ground, facing Hagakure with a warm, reassuring smile. I'm happy to stay right here if you are. While some of your classmates cheered at your declaration, namely Ojiro, Ashido, and Uraraka, Hagakure herself went very still. 
The only indication of how she felt was the way her red lips fell into a small O shape. But before you could ask if she was okay, her lips grew into the brightest smile. Kiss me, she commanded, the sleeves of her shirt crinkling as if she was reaching out to you. You did just as she asked. You stepped forwards, using the placement of her clothes and painted lips to find her face. Then you ran your hands into her hair. She chuckled giddily. You could hear the astonishment in her voice. Then, finally, as she found the confidence to run her hands into your hair, you kissed her. She squeaked and froze for just a moment, but then she found her footing and deepened the kiss, holding onto your body for dear life. She was so confident and strong on the surface, but even now you could feel the gentle trembling of her lips. Your classmates cheered you on so you held her as tightly as you could to reassure her that no matter who was watching, you would be proud to kiss her. When you finally broke apart, you had to hold onto her for a second, as she seemed wobbly enough to fall over. But when the cheering died away, you smiled at her, and she smiled back, wiping the lipstick stains from your face. Good kisser, she commented cheerfully, then took a step back and waved a goodbye. Right back at you, you said. Then the two of you returned to your seats. After that, the game carried on. Ashido excused you from the circle to give others the chance to be chosen, so you went over to the kitchen sink to wipe away any remaining lipstick stains. You splashed water over your face then gave it a gentle rub, smirking at the bright red colour that came off on your hands. When you were done, you dabbed at your face with a dishcloth, only to have a small heart attack when someone crept up behind you and tapped you on the shoulder. You turned around. Ochako! You said with surprise evident in your tone. Are you okay? Aren't you meant to be playing the game? She waved off your concern. Mina can lecture me all she wants in a bit, but I wanted to tell you Hagakure wants to see you upstairs, so please go and see her. You could see the pleading in her face, but didn't wait to tell her she didn't need to worry. Before she could get another word in, you headed for the stairs. Once you were on Hagakure's floor, you gave your face one last wipe to make sure the lipstick was gone, then headed for her bedroom. You knocked and waited, but barely had time to lower your hand before the invisible girl flung her door wide. You came, she said in absolute shock. I did, you replied, unsure how else to respond. Ochako said you wanted to see me? At your reply, Hagakure wailed. She did? Oh, talk about being subtle. You tell a girl to be incognito and she basically waves a sign saying Toru is desperate, go see her. You chuckled, reaching out to pat Hagakure on the shoulder while she continued to be a drama queen. I didn't get that impression, I swear. Well, good, she said, before gripping your wrist with an invisible hand to pull you inside her room. Come on in. She was quick to shut the door and pull you over to her bed but let you take a seat in your own time. Once you were comfortable with Hagakure sat beside you, you noticed how she was facing you dead on, and her lipstick was gone. Yet, she seemed hesitant to say anything. To help her out, you asked. So, a kiss. That was something. You seemed pretty into it. What? You felt her smack you in the arm, and when she spoke, her voice was noticeably higher. No, you did. I mean, it wasn't bad. Eight out of ten needs practice. Can't complain. Ah, hush! She tapered off, tittering to herself as you chuckled at her reaction. It was strange to see her being shy for once, but actually, it made your heart flutter to know you could get that kind of reaction from her. Well, if I need to practice, how about you be my... Invisible hands fell across your mouth cutting your witty but honest declaration short. You blinked in surprise. Don't say it yet, Hagakure said softly. She kept her hands against your mouth for a few moments more, until she was sure you wouldn't finish what you had to say, then pulled away. The room was quiet. The air was different. Hagakure took a deep breath. I... 
I just wanted to say... She faltered for a second, but then her words came tumbling out almost too fast for you to hear. Thank you for kissing me in front of everyone, even though I bet it was really awkward, but it meant a lot to me, you have no idea, but please don't force yourself to do it again if you don't want to, and, and please don't kiss me again if you aren't willing to kiss me in front of strangers, because it's different in front of people we know, and I really like you, and I don't want to get my hopes up, but also it's okay if you don't want to, but please tell me now so we can say this kiss was a one-off and it won't affect our friendship, I promise, and... You cut her off with the most heartfelt kiss you could manage. Your heart was starting to break, listening to all her worries especially when they were worries she didn't need to think about because you wanted all of her, every single piece, and there was not a single aspect of her being that you could ever be ashamed of. The silence as the two of you broke apart was beautiful. It was warm and gentle. Then when you closed your eyes, Hagakure pressed her forehead against yours as she giggled in a dreamy, taken aback way. In case she missed the meaning behind your actions, you broke the quiet to tell her exactly how you felt. If I have to march us all the way to Musutafi city centre so I can kiss you in front of crowds of strangers to prove what you mean to me, then I will. Right now. Screw the lockdown, I'll sneak us both out. Just say the word. Instead of talking, Hagakure pressed herself against you. She wrapped her arms around your neck, then with such force, she knocked you backwards onto the mattress. If you were aiming for my lips just now, you kissed my cheek, you dolt. Her laughter was infectious. She squeezed herself close to you, nuzzling her cheek against yours as you laughed off your embarrassment at the tender moment misfired. She kissed your cheek again and again. Then when she was finally done peppering you with affection, she pulled back. Finish what you were saying earlier. You raised an eyebrow. It took you a second to remember too caught up in the warmth of her body against yours and the sweetness of her kisses. But once you remembered, to humour her you repeated the sentence she had cut you off from saying earlier. Well, if I need to practice kissing, then how about you be my teacher? You heard the utter glee in her voice. I suppose I can teach you when I'm free. Maybe. I'll have to check my schedule. I can't make any promises, but I'll have you up to the Hagakure standard in one long session, and that's a promise." She squeaked in delight, cuddling herself close to you, then with the biggest grin on your face, you wrapped your arms around her and held her against you. Yes ma'am, I'll be up to your standards in no time. <laughs>